Farming is all about community. Communities working together to support each other through good times and challenging ones. Nobody understands how rural communities share life's joys and sorrows, risks and rewards better than the Beck family. They know that farming is important and fulfilling work, but that it also at times can be dangerous. In 2019, in the state of Minnesota, fire and rescue departments dealt with 12 grain bin entrapments, 11 of them ending in loss of life. One of those 12 entrapments occurred on a farm near the small town of Gibbon. On October 8, 2019, uh, local farmer Jerry Schwarzrock was uh, engulfed or entrapped in his grain bin. His sons found him there. Uh, he had been there for a couple hours. We've always helped my dad farm. And on that day, the augers were running and we figured corn was transferring. Didn't see my dad's truck. So we thought that maybe he went to town and left it, this everything transfer. We came back and we heard that the augers were running empty. I'm like, something's going on. And all of a sudden I heard, light helps, help, help. And we ran up the bin and there he was and the corn was up to his neck. He was just, his head was sticking out. Then I called uh, 911. The page simply came across uh, with an address and that there was a, an individual trapped in his grain bin. I knew the address. Like many rural fire departments, you pretty much know who you're going to help. The worst did strike my mind, obviously, because uh, th it's not very often there's a successful rescue from a grain bin entrapment. We arrived on scene and I immediately climbed up to the top of the bin to see uh, what was needed. And then I saw Dana in there working on, on Jerry. They wanted me inside that bin next to him. He was pretty much chest on down. We were just trying to dig him out to start with. We put on oxygen right away. That dust in the, in the bin got pretty out of control. And I just told him, you have to keep talking to us. I don't know your state of mind or where you're at, but as long as you keep talking to me, I know that you're with us. It was a nonstop roller coaster for those couple hours. Your mind is just spinning. We were cutting holes. We were making sure everything's off. There was a lot of grain on the opposite side of that grain bin that, that continued to flow down at us like, like avalanches. There's a couple times that uh, we had to stop and just say, we're not winning. What are we going to do? I remember him looking at me saying, my foot is in the auger. And that was probably the most helpless feeling. We knew right then and there that we had a lot of grain to move to get to the point where we could work on detangling him from that. It's fortunate that his pants were ripped off and uh, entangled in that auger, tripping the breaker. And that's what stopped the flow of the grain. It stopped it just in time. It came to my mind, we could probably use a grain vac. I gave a good buddy of mine a call and I said, we need your grain vac, bring it over to Jerry's. He says, okay, we'll be on our way. And that grain vac was just the key in working right around the victim. It was so fast. It sped that process up by easily 30, if not 45 minutes. With help from God, the first responders, and the community, Jerry's life was saved. Due to his harrowing experience and the high percentage of entrapment fatalities, Gibbon Fire and Rescue realized they needed a grain vac of their own and a means of transporting it quickly to a scene. They called the project R3, Rural Rescue Response. The machinery is getting larger, the bin storage, the farms are getting larger. Rescue squads, fire departments need to grow with that. What tools would be ideal for a rural rescue? Basically went from we want to get a grain vac to help with grain bin rescues to we need some storage and why don't we use this storage for other types of rural rescues, going from a tractor rollover or to somebody caught in a piece of equipment. And, and that's where R3 was born. We put our visions on some papers and some drawings. Little sketch on my computer just using Publisher with shapes and really kind of a cheesy initial model. But it did the work of painting the vision and finding somebody to build it and getting those quotes, getting the dollars so that we could then go to fundraising. It all takes money to, to build something like this. We said early on in the process that we didn't want to add this to our local taxpayers. We decided to go to egg businesses and local businesses and, and kind of put it out there for anyone who wanted to donate specifically towards this project. We always have the community behind us. 
Our fundraising events are just out of control. People knock at our door to try to help us in, in what we can do. Nate kind of had something drawn up and he's like, I need some members to help out. And I'm usually one that doesn't say no. So I'm like, yep, what do you need? A lot of people that I'm connected with had a passion about this. So when you connect all the dots, we can get the financial means to help get this R3 system going. We kind of dispersed who knows who in the community and we kind of used our personal relationships to reach out and get funding. Our target was 105,000 total dollars, but 55,000 was gonna trigger the order of this thing, and we hit that within three months. Having placed the order, the community continued to raise funds for tools and equipment to handle a variety of rural rescues. In March of 2023, they were notified that the R3 was ready for pickup. I'm not gonna lie to you, I got a little emotional when I, when I saw it for the first time. Knowing what we had accomplished and how great the community around us is to support us. Not only will we use it, but if there is another grain bin rescue within probably a 60 mile radius, someone will be out the door with that piece of equipment. We're here to help everybody. This isn't no longer a concept. There's money out there that can help other fire departments put one of these in service in their fire district to help farmers in their area. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. What a great opportunity to celebrate an accomplishment of the community. Later in March, the Gibbon community gathered at the firehouse to officially celebrate their achievement with an in-service dedication. Fire and rescue teams from nearby communities were also invited to see the new R3 that would be available to help save lives. This is gonna draw a lot of attention to area farmers knowing there's a green back available if this should ever happen again. And let's hope we don't have to use it. Speaking as a mayor to other mayors in the area, I guess it would be extremely great to have something like this in all your areas. It, it's definitely a, a must-have thing. Our goal is that any department that needs one can have one, and so we're not done here. This is a first of its kind. To our knowledge today, nobody has built a custom trailer that has a back mounted to it for the grain bin entrapments and the storage capacity to hold all of those tools for rural rescues. But I don't want it to be one of a kind. I want it to be the first of its kind. Bex is proud to support Gibbon Fire and Rescue's R3 project and is dedicating this season of Bex Day Ever to exploring the stories of rural rescuers who protect and serve their communities. After all, the Bex Day Ever is one where everyone gets home safe. <laughs>